Hi there everyone, today I'm reviewing Echoes of Eternity by Aaron Dembski Bowden. So this is book seven in the Siege of Terror series, we're nearly there. With the falling of the ultimate wall and the Bab Bastion, the defenders gather to the Delphic battlement. The last stand before the traitors are into the palace, where they can summon demons and the fight is effectively over. So, the defences are failing and falling and one last fight is on the cards, but how good of a read does it make? <clears throat> so the first section of this book is predominantly exposition. The walls that have fallen, what's left, and where the battle has been left at. This really helps set the scene, and I think it sets up well the second portion of the book, where there's a lot of callbacks to previous books in the series, you know, to other series such as the Horus Heresy main series, the Emperor finding Sanguinius, the gladiator gladiatorial pits of the World Eaters as they fight alongside and against the Blood Angels on the Conqueror, and it develops some of the relationships really well between these factions. And it makes for a sizeable but interesting diversion that makes a lot of sense in terms of setting up character arcs for Echoes of Eternity. And this means that the latter sections of the book can really just accelerate and focus on the action and what's going on between the different characters. And that, that works well as a structure, I think. The book's the largest um, by far, I think, in the series. This is uh, the hardback version, the really nice, I really like the art when you take off the slip cover. Um, this clocks it, I think, at 522 pages, so it's pretty sizable, but a really good book so far. So, just to include a quotation here, and I open quote, The ground was infected. He was careful where he trod, moving around patches where the earth was plagued with calluses and warts, keeping clear of rippling pools of unwater that stank like cancer. Who had known that marble could sweat pus? Who would ever have guessed that soil could bleed? End quote. And that's from page 73. The characters are so many and so varied in this book. I think it'd be spoiling a lot just to talk about them too much. But Sanguinius and Angron obviously feature, as do Amit, Vulcan, Magnus, Cargos of the World Eaters, Arkenland, Zephon, and more. And when it comes to characters, Aaron is really a master of parallels. We saw him do it most efficiently in, and, and effectively in The First Heretic. But here he plays characters off well against each other, and not just with human and space marine. Inzar and Kargos in this book have echoes of Khan and Argal Tau, with a close relationship despite being very different to each other. The obnoxious Arkan Land and heroic Zephon contrasts well as an unlikely duo, and they help create tension and diverse perspectives before the final assault. It really helps to create more depth and perspective in the action and story, and this is a really strong theme throughout. But some of the themes are ones we've seen before. The contrast between the Imperium, a totalitarian state that stubbornly refuses to see its own ignorance and imposes what it wants regardless of beliefs, and chaos, embracing the truth, even if it's something you're probably better off not knowing. These themes are explored well within some of the actions and reactions in this book. Arkan Land is a prideful and an obnoxious character, and he has disdain for everything around him, but finds himself becoming sentimental towards the end. And, you know, probably this is driven by fear, but it adds depth. And the relationships are used to explore some of these themes really effectively, such as in the following quotation, I open quote, I'm always correct, Land retorted, but what's this? You fear I'm correct? I thought your kind knew no fear. His frills had bound Zephon's long hair back from his face, but he brushed a stray wisp off his temple. He kept gazing at the blurred silhouettes far away in the ash. The horde was out of the range of the wall guns for now but within every defender's head was a silent countdown. We know fear, Zephon said softly. 
we are merely conditioned to overcome it. End quote, page 307. And this is just one example of the mastery of Aaron's writing. He manages to blend good story and themes that we've both seen and new themes, whilst developing characters well. And I think these combinations are when his writing is at its best. So this book was intended to portray the lives of the bystander for the most part, though. An analogy I've stolen from the fourth word is that Aaron didn't want to write from Alexander the Great's perspective, but those around him. Aaron mentions in the afterword how he could have written the book from the perspective of Sanguinius, for example, but that wouldn't have done justice to the common imperial citizen caught up in all of the chaos. I think his reasoning and approach works well. I imagine for the final two books, much of it will explore more of the Emperor and Horus. And to avoid focusing on key players here, um, help us avoid too much repetition and it gives more substance to the war itself. And I think this, this is a really good approach. Even though my preference for many of the other books in the series would have been to be more focused towards characterization and exposition, I think Aaron is sort of strong enough in terms of writing to kind of pull this off in a way. Echoes of Eternity becomes really exciting at the end. There are several jewels involving Primarchs that are brilliant, and I don't want to spoil anything, but one recurring encounter between two Primarchs was woven really well, away from the main battle. In terms of the actual battle, it, main battle itself, though, Sanguinius really is the star of the show, even at moments such as his speech before the attack. I don't really find there to be many areas that I can be hugely critical about in this book. Some of the build-up works well, but perhaps there's a bit too much of it in places, and I think it's a common complaint of mine in this series. But this is definitely a lesser offender. To change it in terms of this might weaken some of the stronger elements such as developing Amit and Cargos and some of the relationships or when some space marines come across other human characters. For, there was one instance for example where a white scars moment seemed really just shoehorned in. I don't know why, I mean I know why it was put in there but it just seemed unnecessary and it should have been given more provenance if you're going to include it I thought. But there's other moments um, that are seemingly insignificant that become quite significant. So maybe later on there's some kind of allusion to it or it turns out to be more important. I would say the Hindara uh, was something that was built upon really well without saying too much. So the emotion in the book really does stand out as well. At times it's especially bleak and grim. And as I started um, with the quotation earlier, it can even be quite horror-like or disgusting. Moments with the Blood Angel's rights, if you have the misfortune to be aware of such things, come to mind. But it does really help immerse you in the book and gives it real depth. Perhaps more so than any other book in the series. Some descriptions can be quite brutal or even morbid. Aaron keeps you guessing in this book. Some of the action towards the end... Um, perhaps they could have been expounded on a bit more, but surprisingly the blend is much more towards characterization than action. And it does it has happened in the Horus Heresy series. I mean we've had so many books now that you're bound to get a mix of blends. But I think the thing is Aaron is such a good writer at characterization that um it makes this one really strong. I also wasn't as sure though that some characters had as much gravitas or were as interesting as the time spent on them, such as there was kind of like these discussions with the Thralls uh, serving Zephon, for example. And it, I don't know, they weren't very nuanced in my mind. Maybe I missed something, but, um, you know, Zephon I find to be a really interesting character, but, you know, it's definitely subjective. But it's undeniable that all the contrasts and sort of characterization elements are done really well here and it makes for a really good book. So in terms of final score, you know, this book, Echoes of Eternity, has exciting fights, a blend of interesting characters that play off well against each other, and it's a book that keeps you guessing, which makes you want to read on. And you kind of think you know, oh, I know what happens here, and 
the Horus Heresy Warhammer story, but then it sort of throws a spanner in the works here and there that make it interesting. And to be honest, outside of Warhammer, this is just a brilliant sci-fi thriller. It's definitely one of the best in the series, and it's a great setup for the finale, so Echoes of Eternity, 9 out of 10. It's the best Siege of Terror book so far, so excited for the last two volumes, uh, The End and the Death, and I'll be reviewing them on the channel, so stay tuned for that. Cheers for watching.